Hello, today we'll be looking at what's in this little envelope from HERC, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder to please like or dislike this video if you don't like it, comment down below, don't forget to subscribe, and if you can find that little bell icon somewhere, click on it, and depending on YouTube's mood, it might tell you when I'm uploading stuff. So, what we have in this little envelope is a new VTX from HDRC. This is the HDRC Zeus VTX. Zeus, also the name of their flight controller, so I guess they're tying it all in there. Now, I did review a HDRC VTX not long ago, and that was called the uh, Forward VTX, 25 to 800 milliwatts, um, quite low profile, 30.5 uh, um, mil arrangement on the screw holes. Worked pretty well. There's not an awful lot of difference in this one in terms of spec, but the mounting options are a little bit different. But let's open up this envelope and get stuff out and uh, I'll show you what we've got. So the first thing I notice here, and I don't know, it's maybe I've got a pre-production one, but I've got these large A4 sheets of uh, the instructions. I'm guessing this might be minimized down a bit into a little booklet or something, but all, all pretty good. Nice full color, tells you the uh, wiring instructions, all that sort of stuff, very nice. Got the little Zeus board itself in here. I'm going to show a close up so we can have a better look at what's there. And then connection wise, we've got this connector. So obviously we can solder this end to our flight controller. And we've got a couple of options of antennas. We've got this little dipole here for your, probably your smaller type of quad. And then we've got this little right angled MMCX to SMA adapter for uh, your sort of larger, more traditional quads. But let's go down to close up and we'll have a, a better look at this board and I'll show you what's different about it. Okay, here we are. Here's the Zeus VTX, and here's the here's the cool thing about it is the the mounting holes. These are the 30.5 mil. That's your sort of regular full size stack. But uh, if you get a three inch, and some people are, are running sort of this on on a five inch now, these holes are 20 mil for a 20 mil stack. The only thing it doesn't do, of course, is the really micro 16 mil stack. Um, and so you've got two buttons here to control, which almost no one will be doing. Now this thing uh, uses tramp. We've got the connector there for all those inputs, but we've also got solder pad if you want to go in there and, and keep it more low profile. And this is quite nice. You've got different uh, LEDs for your power, your band, your channel. Although quite how easy it is to see that, because that will normally be sort of sat like that, is, is another question. Uh, and if we can compare it to the, the old Ford VTX, there's, there's quite a difference really, both in terms of physical size and some of the, the bits you've got on the board there. I don't think this had much of a, a sort of indication of saying what it was on with LEDs. If so, it was kind of like, work out what the combination of lights is. This had a microphone on it, and so does this just here. I talked to HDLC about this actually, because I stole how, how's your microphone? Normally I use a bit of foam over to get cleaner sound and they said, yep, do that. That's what we do as well. So as, as per, per yet, I haven't managed to get super clean audio out of any of these little microphones, but we'll give it another try on that one. So as you can see that if you want to mount it 20, these, you've got a little dotted liner. You can literally just snap these off with a pair of pliers and then it's, then it's your 20 mil board. But yeah, that should be interesting to test. We'll be putting this on this quad again. I think this has still got the forward VTX in there, so it should be pretty easy, but I'll show you what happens when we open that up and how easily this drops down or not. Let's have a look. Okay, so that's the new VTX installed. And you see, I've just got this piece of foam. It's kind of loose. I've just cut a little slit to put it along there. And it's kind of held in a little bit by that. I wouldn't be surprised if that flies off mid-flight, but I didn't want to put it down too tight and compress it, so that's my little thing there. I expected this to be a little easy to get in. The reason it wasn't completely easy is because it turned out in this uh, forward MTX I took out, I'd soldered on. So in order to not go back into the flight control and rip that out, I soldered this one in again and that was a little bit tight, but hey, it went in okay. So basically I'm gonna just chuck the top on this and uh, take it out for a fly when it stops raining. Hello, here we are on a pretty cold and it's very wet on the ground, but otherwise, absolutely gorgeous lovely and clear but so so cold now uh, at least the wind's not up that's the main thing but anyway we got the vtx installed so i want to try and do the normal thing and that's sort of go out on the various uh ranges of power and see how it looks see if we've essentially yeah see if we've got any problems um how we can induce breakup how's it look generally is there any noise that sort of thing so uh, let's get to it
So that's what the microphone sounds like. Again, when you have sort of low amounts of noise, it sounds pretty good. But as soon as the props start up heavily, um, it just seems to overwhelm it. Now, I wanted to show this one specifically because I thought this was outstanding performance on 25 milliwatts. You see there in the corner, we've got F11. So this is just 25 milliwatts. I am more worried at this point about the a control signal being lost with the RSI going pretty low but normally I would expect quite a bit of noise here and a little bit of snow starting to appear but this is uh, really really good I was really impressed with this and uh, as we come along and sort of under this open barn thing we don't get any flickers of anything so that was good out about 500 meters without uh, displaying any problems now I should explain that this was the nebula micro camera from Isheen and Cadex that I reviewed uh, a week or two ago so I wasn't particularly impressed with the camera and you can see I'm missing the bottom part of the OSD which I cocked up when I set up the camera but you can ignore that bit because we're just looking at pretty much how much snow or noise or anything we've got through the signal. Um, I wanted to use the VTX for a while so I actually tried it with a couple of cameras uh, just, to, just to make sure I had a, a good point of view about it essentially so this is just the landing on 25 and I'll show you what happens with the other powers here if we do a sort of split screen and have a look as mentioned this one uses the tramp protocol so it's pretty easy to go in through your OSD and change things interesting point here I was going in to change the power to 200 and I managed to cock up my movements and put it in pit mode instead and you can see pit mode goes to really really low power normally when I'm this close I'm thinking oh I can just go back in and, and easily set it back again I had to get the quad very close by to uh, be able to actually see enough on the OSD to change it so pretty good if you're racing in any sort of team event or even if you're individual and you crash you can get it immediately into pit mode and you won't be disturbing anybody else's picture which is a good thing so here's the split screen and I've included the 25 milliwatts of what we just did and there is a 100 milliwatt setting as well I, I didn't put that on uh, mainly because I just thought you know it'll look pretty much the same and uh, I didn't have enough space on the screen but one bizarre thing about this is how similar they all look normally 25 milliwatts you can really tell is 25 milliwatts and as soon as you get to 200 milliwatts uh, the, the larger powers kind of look the same but I always like to see the, the higher power because sometimes that higher power can induce uh, some sort of screen artifacts and noise um, and we just don't have any of that in this it's all very clean um, we've got some flickering on the blue which seems to come from the camera and if you look at the 400 milliwatts there's a bit of water on the lens that's the only real difference here uh, apart from the, the fact that despite me trying to do vaguely the same flight four times it's all coming out slightly different but you get the you get the idea we seem to have uh, a nice clean display on the various powers there's no sort of interference or noise caused by going higher and uh, we've got an outstanding sort of picture on 25 milliwatts one thing I can't do because I haven't got the equipment is actually check the power that's coming out to say yes this is definitely 25 and this is definitely 200 um, so I have to take that on face value but from what we're getting here uh, yeah 25 milliwatts looks very good the other powers also coming in very clean uh, no noise or anything like that so that's really good very nice so far now after doing those flights and despite not having the bottom part of my OSD so I didn't know what my battery voltage was I took a couple of batteries and just had a good fly around just to see if there's any issues and the only time I got a slight flicker was down here when I'm sort of there's a brow of a hill slightly in a way and that can be seen if I look at the next camera I tested out which was the Foxeer Predator 5 Micro and this is in a very similar section where we're trying to go through the brow of a hill and there's a couple of trees in the way we certainly get some interference from losing the signal through things and that's the sort of thing you'd expect uh, of course we recover the signal as per normal and we're all good so as long as we've got a decent line of sight to it as you might expect uh, it, it all works nicely and at this point there's not much more I can say about it the signal seems very nice and clean it's not breaking up uh, where you wouldn't expect it to and it's 25 milliwatt signal is particularly strong just a shame I tried it with two cameras none of which that I particularly thought were very good which is a bit of a shame but uh, I can't blame any of that on the VTX itself so yeah
pretty good. Had a good good old time with it and a good old fly. Well, there you go. This little VTX performed very well, and I was particularly impressed by the 25 milliwatt performance, possibly the best I've seen out of any VTX I've used doing that same old loop. I always get static there, and I, I wasn't getting any breakup at all. In fact, all the different modes look practically identical, so I think this could take you for a long way. Um, I mean, the big difference between this and a lot of other VTXs is the fact you can mount it on your 30.5 mil stack or your 20 mil stack. So your generally your five inches or your three inches are catered for. Now I put it on a five inch. In the future, I'm hoping to put this one on a three inch because I have a, a three inch quad that I need to kind of rebuild a bit. I just don't know how long it's going to be till I, I get around to doing that. Now the only misstep for me is the LEDs. I think these LEDs are very useful to say, oh, I'm on this band and this channel and this power. It's just, you, you can't see them. Normally on a stack, you're gonna be like that. So you can't sort of just peek under. So either the LEDs need to be sort of on the top or on the side. I mean, even if you're on a sort of standalone thing, not in a stack, it's still, because they're up the other way. Um, and I think you, you want to have it this way because that's where all the heat components are. So you want the heat to rise up there. You wouldn't want it that way up. Um, so yeah, that's the only problem. Great idea, just can't see them. But for the majority of people, of course, you'd be using tramp protocol to go and change this so it's, it's not a big deal anyway. Uh, everything else is good. Currently, um, and I don't normally like to talk about prices because prices changed, uh, this is on offer for it's like 20, 23 79 on HGLC's website, which is a crazy sort of price for the sort of thing you're getting there. So that's uh, a good deal at the moment. I just don't know how long it's going to last because the normal price is like 39 99 So just be aware that if you're in the market for one, um, I don't know if this is part of the Black Friday thing, but yeah, it's the links down there and so you can check it out in more detail. Anyway, this has been the Zeus VTX from HLRC and was kindly supplied by HLRC for review. So thanks very much to those guys. And as I said before, you can find links down below for where you can check this out in more detail. Hope the review has been helpful. I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.